spoilers for Dune Part 2. There's a moment in Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2 that many agree is both a high point in the film's story and perhaps even a pivotal moment in Paul's journey. But more than that, it's a masterpiece of cinema. And I mean that in the sense of sight and sound. If you haven't seen his breakdown already, I would highly recommend watching Thomas Flight's Why This Scene from Dune 2 Felt So Insane, where he brilliantly explains exactly why. But I'm not here to talk about why that scene in Dune Part 2 is so amazing, and it is. I'm here to talk about how when I watched this moment on opening night at an IMAX theater, the first thing that came to my mind was a video game. Really though, not just the game itself, but a very specific moment in that game. And as I sat there, I wondered if anyone else's mind jumped to that exact moment in that exact same video game. The game was Shadow of the Colossus, and the moment was… well, I'll get to that in a minute. But first, for the sake of those who have not experienced this amazing game, let me attempt to provide a little context. If you're already familiar with the game, however, feel free to skip ahead to the following timestamp. Shadow of the Colossus was originally a PlayStation 2 game which first premiered in 2005 under the direction of Fumito Ueda. It is considered by audiences and critics alike to be an iconic, timeless classic and has gone on to be re-released twice since its original premiere. First in a slightly updated, higher fidelity remaster on the PlayStation 3 in 2011 and then with a full remake complete with many of its original features rebuilt from the ground up and launched on the PlayStation 4 in 2018. The game itself is generally categorized as a story-driven, single-player action-adventure game, though many argue its unique design mechanics qualify it as sort of a puzzle game as well. Throughout the game, you play as a nameless boy who comes upon a strange land riding his horse, Agro, whose name we only know, by the way, because the boy sometimes calls out to summon the horse during gameplay. As the game finishes a somewhat cryptic initial opening story scene and hands over control to you, you learn of your quest to defeat more than a dozen giant guardians of this strange land, each referred to as a Colossus. The gameplay then consists primarily of two repeating parts. One, finding each colossus using a stolen magical sword the nameless boy carries which, when raised up to the sky, focuses sunlight into a beam that only converges when pointing directly at the location of the next colossus. And two, defeating the found colossus using various methods devised by the game's designers in order to exploit some hinted at weakness in each that allows the player to ultimately climb onto and mortally stab each giant using that same magic sword used to locate them. Each colossus is memorable, usually requiring a unique approach to defeat them, which the player must decipher. Among these guardians are walking giants with massive blunt stone weapons, analogs to real-world animals like a tiger and a great eagle, and a handful of mythical creature equivalents, like a water serpent and a giant sandworm, and a flying desert creature whom has been referred to by fans of the game as Phalanx. And those two colossi in particular, but especially the flying desert phalanx, were where my mind immediately went in that scene in Dune Part 2. That specific moment is when leaping from the horse Agro onto the flying desert phalanx and climbing up its wings. So why did my mind go there? Well, I'm not 100% sure I guess, but I do have a few thoughts on what similarities do exist between the moment where Paul mounts and rides the giant sandworm and where the nameless boy mounts and climbs the flying sandworm. Like Paul, the boy encounters a colossal desert serpent and must figure out a way to climb on. Paul devises this through a method taught him by the Fremen, where he baits the giant creature, similar to how the boy baits several of the colossi he faces, in order to mount them. In both the movie and the game, there are moments while facing each giant where you feel that in any second the character could be tossed aside or crushed or pulled under and ultimately killed. But most of all, the moment in the game when you successfully climb on are these moments of elation and intense excitement, just like the moment when Paul stands up and rides the worm. So maybe it was that feeling, how that moment felt just like I did when I climbed on to conquer the phalanx, that my brain recalled as Paul stood and conquered the sandworm. Anyway, just something that crossed my mind. It also made me wonder if that upcoming Dune game announced is going to try and do something similar to what's done in Shadow of the Colossus, where you might get to actually mount and ride a worm. And if so, I really hope they're taking notes from that game on how to do it right. What about you? Did anything jump to your mind while watching this amazing scene from Dune Part 2? Please share in the comments.
In any case, I recently replayed the Shadow of the Colossus game, the 2018 version, and did time attack challenges against those two colossi from the desert. I used footage from my own attempts for what I show in this video. So if you're interested in watching both of those full fights, I say full, but I trimmed out the parts where I had my most egregious failures, please check out the full video on my gaming channel. I also have channels dedicated to my own personal animation. My latest is poking fun at GPT-40's first announcement video, as well as an extra channel where I do random stuff like movie and show reviews in under 60 seconds. All of those are linked in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and thank you so much for sticking with me, even if you hated my X-Men 97 Episode 3 hot take. I hope to see you in the next one. Listen, I gave!